Okay, so I got my cart tow hitch today. I want to show you a few things. How did I get this in there? This truck's tall, right? So I lifted up this end with my hand and I put that end of the hitch on my knee. I held it up with my knee and then I fed this one bolt in here without a washer because all I want to do is hold this hitch in there level so I can bolt it up. Now I've got to put these two I guess you can't see. Sorry about that. This bolt here and this bolt here. We'll see if they fit. Um, I should be able to get them up in there. I sprayed liquid wrench there on the threads because this truck hasn't had a hitch. But let me show you something that's really irritating to me. So I can get these two bolts in here on the hitch, which is the one closest towards the back. And this one, neither one of these has a washer. I'm going to pull this one off or this one, put a washer, put a washer on these ones at a time. But look at this. Hopefully you can see this. This hitch is not welded properly. And this angle bracket, or this bracket that comes off here, you probably can't see it. It kind of goes in. So the hole there is off. The hole's fine on the frame, but the hitch is bent inward. So what I'm going to try to do is once I get these on there fairly snug, not actually not tight at all, just, just so it, this won't slop around, I'm going to put a crescent wrench on there and I'm going to try to pry that out just enough to get a bolt on there. But I don't have a lot of hope in that, but I'm kind of pissed off about it. And see, it also gets in the way of my damn trailer plugs here, which is really irritating me. So uh, I'll let you know what I do. Okay, folks, since this uh, Kurt tow hitch from e-trailer isn't manufactured properly, let me show you what I'm trying to do in order to pull that bolt hole over where it belongs. Um, I've got the C-clamp on here, and I'm pulling that bracket. The other side I've got bolted down 80, not 86 foot-pounds, I think it was. So whatever I do over here is not going to interfere with that. So what I've got here is a C-clamp connected to this piece of frame and I'm pulling this over and uh, it's just about there but the problem is now it's up forward so I guess I can try to tap on that I'll probably end up this will probably end up flying off to get that bolt hole on but um, I really want that bolt hole on because my brackets are or my uh, wiring harness is right here and I don't want this in the way of that Okay, so I'm kind of pissed off about this, but I couldn't get that third bolt in. I, uh, I was able to bend it over, and I'll try to take a picture of this and put it in here. So I was able to bend it this way, but it's too far this way. So the bolt won't fit in there. So what I did is I torqued both of these down to 86 foot-pounds. I'll try this one more time. I don't think it's going to work. I'll take a picture with the flash so you can see. So I'm going to take this off after I try this one more time. And hopefully that'll be enough pressure to, uh, to keep this bracket over so it's not going to interfere with my plug here. Okay, so I drew this over with a C-clamp. see if I have it. Ugh. It's a piece of the frame here. So I was able to put this C-clamp in here with the bolts loose on this side and draw that over. But the problem is, it's still too far this way towards the leaf spring. So I took that big step drill and I drilled it out. And see, I didn't really want to drill into the frame at all, but I did, so I had to stop. So next I'm going to try to take a punch and a big hammer, and I'm going to try to knock that back just enough so I can get that bolt in there. And uh, I may have to go to the store and get a bigger, thick washer to put on there to hold that on. Um, we'll see what the spring washer looks like. So, uh, there we are so far. Okay, I think I may have it. Hopefully I'm not going to cross there that bolt in there. Yeah, I think I got it. I think it feels pretty good. So next I'm going to hold the washer up and see how much bite that's going to get. 
hopefully you can see that I took that punch and I, you know, after I thin that with that step drill, I wanted to thin this side out because it's some thick steel. I took my center punch and I punched this back just enough so I could get that bolt in there. Okay, to check how much bite I have, so these are spring washers, which means it's uh, kind of convex or concave, depending on your point of view. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to put it here. See how much bite I have, and I think I have enough. Okay, so it's up there. I've got six bolts in there. I'll torque to 86 foot pounds. I can't put the uh, trailer plug on yet because I'm waiting on a bracket that I ordered from Amazon to mount that here. Otherwise, I have no way to hold that seven blade uh, trailer plug on there. But uh, when I do, it shouldn't be a big deal. You know, you just undo these caps here, plug it in, route it, mount it, and then you get inside the, the uh, passenger side, you take a kick plate off. And then a wiring harness goes right on the pre-designed plug. You put some relays on there. And apparently, you uh, sometimes you have to reroute some wires, but it shouldn't really be that big deal. Okay, E-Trailer had a video, and they just kind of said to connect that together and stuff this up in here. I don't like that. See, if you look, there's this channel here, and I think I can stuff that plug up through here so that these relays sit right here, which is probably the way Nissan intended. Okay, so there we had that. I couldn't get that plug off, and I didn't want to rip at these cables and possibly jar something loose. So unfortunately, I had to feed these uh, relays through. Not that big a deal. I would have rather just stuck the plug through and put it on. Um, so do that. I give you a little bit more clearance so that that kick plate um, stays flat. Okay, now E-Trailer said to make sure these are loose in here. So you can kind of go like this and they won't rattle, but I think I like them better like this. Kind of tucked in there. Maybe I'll move this one down. Makes for a cleaner install. Okay, so I stuffed one of the relays in there. Got these two here. I don't know if it's going to rattle, but hopefully that's in there without crimping any of those um, wires and stuff. And hopefully I didn't loosen any of these. Back on. To get this guy off, you just spin it off. There's a there's a bolt head that comes out. That's just kind of loosely threads on there. There's two two um, connectors that go in this way. So you pull this off this way, and uh, I'm gonna put the uh, I don't know sill plate back on. That should just thread in here. Okay, you can see that goes there. Looks like these just go down into those grooves. And to get this off, just a fly, you just carefully throw a screwdriver under there, flathead, and just pull it up from the end. So I'm going to set the camera down. Okay, one complaint people have <clears throat> with installing this trailer plug is that Nissan apparently wasn't consistent with the wiring. So, I heard one user say that, or reviewer say that they snipped these and just moved the wires, but I really don't think that's necessary. Looks like they make this little fastener back here so that you can pop these out and then pop this back. And then this comes off, and I'm assuming you can pull these out um, and switch them up if you need to. So we'll see tomorrow if I plug this in, if it works uh, the first time. If not, I'm going to pull this off, and then this whole thing comes off here, and uh, switch those wires around. So I just want to show you that.